The GW Instec GPE3323 is a three-channel linear DC power supply with two adjustable channels providing 0 to 32 volts DC at up to 3 amps with constant current and constant voltage settings. The third channel is a fixed 5 volt DC output that provides up to 5 amps. I'm setting up a bench at another location and needed a good power supply. Instead of getting another Siglent SPD3303XE, which I like a lot, I decided to get the GW power supply, which is in many ways the Siglent's peer. There are other videos on the Siglent SPD3000 power supply line, but few that I could find on this GW Instec line. So in this video, we're going to explore the 3323 briefly, just to gain a sense of the unit. I've played with it only a little bit since it arrived, so this will be new for me too. Let's get started. First off, what comes in the box? Well, there's a packing list that goes down a checklist of what it comes with, which is first and foremost, of course, the power supply unit and number of guides and cords. So we'll look at those one by one. Um, first of all, it comes with a PDF of the user's manual, which is a reasonably complete 50-page document written in English that uh, is entirely helpful and appropriate for the unit. There's a uh, traceable calibration certificate that uh, describes the type of equipment that was used to determine the calibration of the unit and the conditions, so that's nice. There's what is termed a quick start guide, this document here, which is really more of a statement of the specifications rather than a useful button-by-button -button, uh, description of how to get it up and running. But that said, it's a, it's a nice little thumbnail sketch of what the unit can do. And then finally, it comes with the uh, ground, ground bar, which is nice. It will probably get lost immediately on my bench. And, and it comes with three sets of cables. These cables are actually quite nice. They're they're not silicon, but they're uh, a nice flexible rubber. Um, they are marked quite clearly with these labels that they uh, are rated at 600 volts and 10 amps. And I have no reason to doubt that. They have these uh, nice spade connectors here on the end. They're not at all flimsy. They're quite rigid. Just unscrew this to look at how it's connected and you see it's connected uh, not by crimping technology but rather it's it's soldered in just fine thank you very much so I don't think these are going to fall apart and uh, on the other end it comes with alligator clips so there's that and just to uh, take them out of the sleeve. The, the sleeve is a little bit stiff, but it's not too bad. I, I, I generally don't like this style because they're recessed so far into the sleeve, but, um, but it's entirely, entirely appropriate. And you see that, again, it's not uh, crimped, but rather it's soldered in. So these are reasonably, uh, reasonably good quality cables that will be functional for the power supply. Um, and the reason I'm spending time on this is that you, these cables are, are not junk. These are things that I will probably use uh, and use with this particular unit uh, for different applications. They are not something that's just going to be immediately thrown in the circular file. Uh, so that's what comes with the unit. Um, let's turn it on next and see how the display reads and uh, see how loud it is. Okay, I've zoomed in on the unit here and I'm just going to 
push the on button and I want you to listen carefully maybe turn up the volume a bit when I turn this on okay I don't know if you can hear that but standing next to it it is not quiet um, it's not offensively loud but it is it is not quiet let me uh, let me see if I can move the microphone a little closer to the unit here and so we'll turn it off and then on so it's quite loud to the ears and certainly louder than the Siglent uh, power supply that I often use uh, or other power supplies that I've used in the past. Uh, YouTuber TechBench has reviewed the two-channel version of this power supply, the 2323, and he mentions the noise as well and also how he modified the unit to make the noise uh, a little less noticeable. I'll link that series of videos down below. If you can stand the noise, uh, I think this is a nice little unit though. Uh, and part of the reason for that is the large display that is very easy to read and easy to read from any angle that uh, I will likely have to, uh, to, to look at it on my workbench. The controls here are potentiometers. They have a minimum and a maximum as opposed to encoders, uh, as you might find on some other modern power supplies. And they're not multi-turn pots, okay? There's not even one revolution to sweep through the entire range of voltage and it's the same for current uh, but that said it's you know it goes fast but it's not impossible to adjust it uh, precisely but it is a little bit of a pain uh, that said it is not at all painful to adjust it to the nearest um, 100 millivolt range but in the 10 millivolt range it is a little bit more difficult and the same for the milliamper controls the layout of this is self-explanatory it's very well marked right it's very clear volts and uh, current volts and amps we have channel one here, ground, channel two, and then channel three. Channel three is not adjustable, it's just a plain five volt rail that, uh, that you cannot change. But channels one and two are continuously variable. And you can operate this in independent mode, so channel one and channel two are independently, uh, independent of one another or in series by selecting these switches here so that this is out and this is down uh, or in parallel. Notice that when you switch, when you choose parallel that both of the both of the channels 1 and 2 automatically opt to the maximum current that the unit will provide. Okay, I will simply point out that the single channel version of this line has a uh, instead of the channel 2 controls they have fine tuning controls for the current and the voltage so I think that means a multi-turn pot uh, but with the real estate limited real estate on the front face here they decided not to offer that for the two and the three channel versions of this power supply. So what I want to do next is hook up a voltmeter to this, a multimeter, and take it through the ranges and see how uh, accurate 
the voltages are set with the calibration standard it should be bang on and uh, talk about a couple other things that are important for operating this all right here's a very large displayed fluke 15b multimeter and the way that we turn the voltage on is right now it's in set mode so I can set it to any value of uh, voltage or current limit that I want so we'll just put the current up a little bit so we are able to get an output um, and we'll just look at channel 1 first and we'll select 1.22 volts and then we press on uh, and so we get 1.24 there and 1.24 so that tracks quite nicely uh, 3.89 on the GW Instech and 3.89 on the Fluke so I do in fact believe that this is calibrated nicely at the factory so again we get 7.7172 versus 7.73 11.2 and 11.2 18.39 versus a little over 18.4 and so on so as we'll go up to 33 volts and we see the same thing so that's that's nice if I now limit the current you see that the voltage dies as well this will draw very little current and then as I crank it down to zero it just cuts the voltage off and you can hear it uh, you can hear the relays flapping inside Okay, so we have channel one. Now let's look at channel two. I'm sure that it will be similarly accurate. Let's give it a little bit of current and start dialing it up there. So nice agreement. Again, good agreement and so on as we go up down the range. That's all fine and there we go at 33 and again if I just limit the current to essentially zero in fact it cuts the voltage off as we would expect now let's uh, look at this in series so I'm going to put this configuration on and uh, I'm going to now put this into series and start adjusting this and the first thing that you notice is that channel one is the master as is listed it's probably hard to see here but is listed under these two banana plugs uh, banana plug jacks and channel two has no control so uh, again we start dialing this up and you, we're not seeing anything under here because I have not turned the voltage on Okay, so again you see that this is the sum of channels one and two which track one another. Okay, so if we bring this up closer to 10 volts, we should get 20, and in fact we do, uh, quite nicely in fact, and this will now provide up to 66 volts uh, with both of these in series. Okay. And, uh, you know, just to make the point now, if we put this into parallel mode uh, and turn it on, then again we see now that each channel changes, you know, tracks the other channel uh, identically, but there will be no, you know, this won't be twice when I go from, um, from rail to rail here okay just as we would expect I think I will stop there this 
make this a very short little video. This is not going to be a complete review of this unit. Uh, it's not going to be a teardown. This is just a very quick spin uh, moments after I've taken this out of the box. The GW Instech GPE 3323. Uh, seems like a very nice linear power supply, uh, entirely adequate for what uh, for what I what I do on the bench with solid state electronics. Um, as it compares to the Siglent, uh, I've not done a review of the Siglent because uh, others have, and you know it's 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 a very nice unit. the The biggest thing, two two main differences between this unit and this unit, as I turn this on, and it comes up. Uh, first thing is that these are you know, side by side instead of one over the other. You pick the channel that you're operating uh, on according to you know buttons and you move back and forth between the different you know current and voltage settings uh, via via buttons and uh, and even you know 100 millivolts versus uh, 10 millivolt level uh, changing by by buttons and rotary encoders on this and, and one other thing is you know channel one channel two channel one channel two on this we have channel one channel two going in the horizontal direction but the display is up and down and you know you have channel one voltage and current seems like you should have channel one voltage and current and channel two voltage and current laid out like that so that it would correspond to the buttons that's going to take getting used to for me uh, because I am just so used to this and this is so intuitive this might be more intuitive to you. This is going to change from person to person, uh, but but that's how it is for me. Uh, and the other thing is again the the noise. This is very difficult to imagine um, overheating because I am here to tell you <laughs> that there is a lot of airflow out the back, uh, and and consequently there's a lot of noise. This has good airflow, but it's not near the noise. Again, let's don't know if we'll be able to hear this but um, let's turn that off so there's the noise with the Instec on there it is with off with it off and we'll now turn the Siglent on so it's off and now it's on so the Siglent is is very quiet with the fan noise whereas this is quite loud on the other hand, if that's the largest complaint, then I think it's all good. All right, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please leave a thumbs up below. And if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.